Well, hello once again. Today we're working on a Haldex 28 gallon per minute hydraulic pump. It's for a log splitter. Uh, ran into some trouble where it was crying and sucking in a lot of air. Uh, it turns out that this bolt here was broken off sometime during factory assembly and just left in the pump. It wasn't until I started looking for the actual source of the problem that I found that the bolt was broken off when I went to check the torque on the bolts themselves. The other problem I found, which is uh, not very helpful, was the intake fitting here. When I went to remove the hydraulic line, the intake whole intake fitting came out with the hydraulic line. Uh, I put a little bit of knurling on it with a flat file, just rolled it on the bench and uh, pressed it back in with a little bit of red Loctite. We're going to see if that works. If that doesn't hold, I'll probably end up getting some silicon bronze rod and brazing it in. I think this is a cast steel pump. I haven't actually done a chip test on it. but The other thing I happened to notice was the pump intake is restricted. It's a little hard to see down there, but it goes from a one inch diameter intake down to a slot that's oh, probably a little bit more than five-eighths of an inch wide and has a couple of really razor sharp edges where that hole is punched through the middle there and uh, I'm not sure about hydraulics a hundred percent but I know in any other kind of flow pattern having a really sharp edge is a bad idea so what I'm going to do is give it the old muscle car treatment and get in there with a uh, couple of die grinder stones and basically give it a little bit of a port and polish to try to smooth up that that opening there where it's all kind of razor edged on that side there so uh, let me dig on this for a little bit now I'll get back to you as soon as I can so we started part one we got the uh, bearings and all the oil passages taped off and we got the first lip uh, cleaned up pretty well. Using the Dremel 4000, it's a really wonderful tool. Just carving away everything, making it look really good. Got the uh, venerable Larry light here, which is one of my favorite go-to shop lights. It just is small, portable magnetic, cranks out the power, and you can put it anywhere you want, and if you destroy it, it's under $10. So Down here you can see through the bore you can see one side has a really sharp edge over on the right and the other side on the left is uh, blended in nicely. I don't imagine sharp edges are any good for hydraulic flow. I know they're horrible for airflow. Um, I know that one edge, the one edge there just where the pump is has to be sharp so that the pump makes a nice clean break to get a full flow. Um, the offset of this inlet pipe, the inlet pipe is offset relative to where the pump intake is. So one side of the pump I think is getting a better fill. The far side is getting a better fill than the near side. So I also blended this edge down in there to try to get a little bit more fluid flow towards that edge. Um, when you're moving close to 30 gallons a minute through a small one inch tube, you're moving it almost I think it's close to four feet a minute, or four feet a second. So it's fluid's really humming through there, and I can't see we're having razor edges and sharp bends and 90 degree cuts in the uh, metal are going to do anybody any good. So we'll polish this other side up. Hopefully the Loctite and press job holds that intake fitting where it needs to be, and uh, we're going to chew through some more on the Dremel, and then we'll see how this puppy runs. Well, there's the final product. Both sides blended nice and even. I don't have a uh, butt dyno flow meter, but just looking at it tells me that it's uh, a whole lot more open, a lot less restrictive than it was earlier. Um, removed a fair bit of material, and uh, just by feel, there's no more transition, no more sharp transition between the uh, intake pipe and where it dumps into the pump so uh, the top side was blended 
a lot and it's got a probably about a half inch radius on it so that should be uh, I think enough to get it running get it running solid Let's see what it all looks like um, the uh, opening is much more relieved than it was before uh, in reviewing one of my earlier YouTube videos uh, I did happen to notice that this pump was crying um, as if it was sucking air right from day one. Uh, I thought it was the motor itself being uh, the big Wisconsin engine. I thought it was the source of the whine. Um, but now that I look back and I think about it, this pump was actually sucking air right from the get-go. Um, why Haldex didn't you know, whoever sent it out the door with a broken bolt, uh, why they would do that is beyond me. Um, why they can't do the extra machine and clean up that port, yeah, well, that's easy because they're trying to make it as cheaply as possible and still have it be functional. But, yeah, when you're trying to move 28 gallons a minute, that's a tremendous amount of fluid flow. So having a smooth passage is going to be uh, helpful. There is a little bit of wear and some little bit of scratches on the inside of the pump, possibly from cavitation. Shouldn't be from dirt because it has a suction filter as well as a discharge filter. So uh, my guess is probably cavitation damage on the inside walls of the pump. The gears look fine, but the pump itself has a little bit of erosion. So anyway, next step is uh, put it all back together with four new bolts from Fastenal, and uh, we'll get this puppy put back together. Gave our Dremel 4000, one heck of a workout today, and uh, performed good as always. So anyway, we'll uh, put it back together and go from there.